Let's begin by talking about the video that I made a few years back called Introduction to Goat Format. Watching it back, I covered pretty much all of the main points of the format without going into too much detail about certain card interactions, but it has one giant glaring issue. Exerion Universe. There are two goat formats that people play, one with Exerion and one without Exerion. I no longer play with Xerion Universe. I have changed my views on it because the more I play the formats, the more I acknowledge that the cards should not be included. I personally never really minded that there was a date dispute about the cards legality in the formats and no one else I know really did either. I mean, as long as a card fits and belongs and is on the border of a format, we never really saw the big deal in playing it. Plus, even the Perovic standard list that everybody has based their GOAT decks off of throughout the years plays Xerion Universe, adding to the confusion fusion even more. I mean, we are talking about a format from 2005 after all. But I decided to stop playing Xerion while I was playtesting for this GOAT tournament in my state that I was also promoting. I playtested rigorously for that tournament and I'm just going to make a long story short and say that we concluded that Xerion Universe truly does take a great deal of skill out of the format. It also makes a huge chunk of the card pool obsolete. Some interactions are more obvious, but others require more time to notice. It makes beatdown and stun decks like Beast Down variants, Skill Drain Beat, as well as Tiger, Warrior Stun variants, way too powerful. It also takes a lot of skill play out of the standard Goat Mirror match by giving them a piercer to get damage in over Goat tokens. <laughs> like I said though, I'm going to keep this short and I'm going to move on from Xerion now. Most players you'll meet at regionals and stuff will still play it, but the masses have long acknowledged that it is not a legal card in the original April 2005 format. Dueling Book also doesn't even allow this card to be played in its Goat Room, for example. I'm not going to go into detail in this video about why this card is so disputed, but I will pin some links down in the comments below so that you can do your own research, including the misunderstanding about Perovic's standard list. Now with all of that out of the way, let's talk about the GOATs. Scapegoats is one of, if not the cornerstone card of the format. It summons four goat tokens on your side of the field that not only let you stall and keep life points, but also give you free material to use with Metamorphosis to make Thousand Eyes Restrict. Thousand Eyes Restrict is the main control card of the format, hence the name of the deck that we all know and love, Goat Control. Thousand Eyes is the only monster that can attack and other monsters cannot change their battle positions. Your other cornerstone cards of the format are Heavy Storm, Mirror Force, and Delinquent Doom. These are the main cards that you always have to respect and play around. Pot of Greed and Graceful Charity are staple cards in the format, yes, but Scapegoats, Duo, Mirror Force, and Heavy Storm are cards that demand respect, and you have to constantly take them into consideration before you make your moves. If you have too many spells and traps, you are open to Heavy Storm. If you get greedy and attack with two or more monsters, you get wrecked by Mirror Force. If you ditch your Serpent or forget to set a card in the mid game, you can be prone to a Delinquent Duo Sacking. And Scapegoats just stalls and stalls and stalls. You also, of course, have to be wary of Metamorphosis for that Thousand Eyes Restrict. Leave a monster on the field at the wrong time without killing all the goats, and it's gonna get sucked up by Thousand Eyes. Another card that's definitely worth mentioning that you have to play around is Torrential Tribute. Let's just put it simply here. If your opponent has no monsters, you might want to make sure that the second monster that you commit to the board is Sangan. Torrential Tribute can catch people off guard and lose them games. If your opponent has a bunch of goat tokens though, it is easier to play around Torrential because if they blow up your monster, then they lose all of their goats as well. <laughs> Other cards that pretty much every deck plays are Premature Burial, Snatch Steel, and Call of the Haunted. This is important to note because most decks also play MST as well as Heavy Storm and Dust Tornado, not to mention Breaker the Magical Warrior. Your spell and trap destruction should be saved for your opponent's equip and continuous cards. If you waste a Dust Tornado and go in blind, you might get lucky and pop a Sakuretsu armor and get some damage in, but you trade that for not having a response to your opponent's Snatch Steel or premature burial. You especially want to save your spell and trap destruction and play it wisely because of cards like Gravity Bind, Level Limit, Skill Drain, and Kaiser Coliseum, among others all being legal cards in the format. And believe me when I tell you that there are many great decks that main deck these floodgates as well as other floodgates like Light of Intervention that prevents you from setting your flip monsters. There is a time and a place to blind Dust Tornado, but that is usually when you are in the top decking war and are winning it. Getting the card that your opponent just set before they 
they can activate it can easily keep you in that winning position. This circumstance will come up, especially if you are playing Beast Down or any other Beat Down oriented deck. Another time to blind pop is with Breaker. However, a lot of the time it is more advantageous to leave Breaker at 1900 attack because not many monsters in the format can get over that. Breaker is a great monster to summon turn one because if your opponent is playing standard goats, then they have to have Sook or Tribe to out the 1900 attack or at least the Meta Serpent combo or Ring of Destruction. So there are outs to Breaker, but that does not change the fact that he is the pressure cooker and can easily affect what your opponent sets in their back row if they don't draw into anything chainable. In closing, you want to use your Breaker strategically in Goats just like your other spell and trap destruction. Pretty much all decks play Breaker because he is a power monster. Speaking of power monsters though, one card that I haven't talked about yet that can honestly be included in the cornerstone discussion is Blackluster Soldier, Envoy of the Beginning. This is because it is by far the most powerful standalone monster in the format. Not only by having 3000 attack, but because it can attack twice, it can banish a monster, and it can sit pretty in defense position with 2500 defense. I said that it can be included in the cornerstone discussion because it, as well as Chaos Sorcerer, are the main boss monsters in all Chaos variants in GOAT format. Chaos Sorcerer is a great card, don't get me wrong here, but BLS is a card that has to be respected even more, way more, and you need to make sure you have an out when he drops on the board or you will lose. Speaking of Chaos, Chaos has debatably taken over as the top deck in GOAT format. This is actually kind of old news. It does gain more advantage than GOATs because it maintains field presence with the tomato engine and it also takes advantage of night assailants so you can do a proof your deck and combo it with graceful as well as get your magician of face back from the graveyard to use again to gain even more advantage the deck also duo proofs gains advantage and loads their graveyard all with thunder dragon however it also might be the most bricky deck of the format because of the chaos monsters and thunder dragons it's also debatably the easiest deck to side against because kaiku is an 1800 attack monster that prevents chaos monsters from being summoned and also also banishes monsters from your opponent's graveyard, but also because Trap Dust Shoot is a popular side deck card and Chaos always has plenty of cards in hand to keep it alive. Shuffling back the Chaos monster before it can come out can be just as good as having a Kaiku up. There are literally tons and tons of other great and viable decks in GOAT format. It's part of what makes it great. There are many builds I plan on showing in this series as well as other channels that I want to invite on. However, I want to talk about the best decks in the format as it stands currently. I just talked about chaos variants and let's just get the obvious out of the way one of the other top decks is still regular old goat control more of the best decks are your warrior toolbox slash tiger stun variants as they can decimate standard goats and chaos by not allowing them to do pretty much anything tiger stun is named after king tiger wenghu which is really good against thousand eyes restrict and scapegoats as well as the recruiters that chaos plays because king tiger wenghu just auto blows up anything that's summoned with 1400 or less attack and the warrior toolbox just has answers to everything. If you need to banish something, you have the different dimension monsters. If you need to kill a flip, you have Blade Knight and Mystic Swordsman, as well as Suzuki Samurai. If you want to pick cards out of your opponent's hand, then you have Don Zaluke. You have Grandmaster Suzuki for Chaos Monsters and Defense Position and Spirit Reapers, as well as Big Shield Gardeners. Finally, though, if you just flat out want to kill something, you have the boys. The other two best decks, in my opinion, that aren't alternative win conditions are Crane Gate Combo Decks and Monarchs. Being able to play three reasons Turbo's powerful monsters onto the field like Parshath, Demok, and Jinzo to quickly overwhelm your opponent and win. You also play Dimension Fusion and Monster Gate on top of the three Reasoning for even more special summoning. Reasoning Gate decks can be very fast, and they are made faster by playing cards like Upstart Goblin as well as the Sacred Crane that Crane Gate is named after. Because Sacred Crane's like your only level 4 that you play, and it lets you draw a card when it's special summoned. Make sure that you play smart and call different levels for Reasoning depending on the situation that you are in against this deck. I include Monarchs as the other best deck because it is debatably the best deck for outing anything that your opponent has. The reasons why the deck can be good is because all of the Monarchs in the format have great effects and combo very well with Snatch Steel, which is a card that I've already talked about briefly earlier in the video. But it also takes advantage of having Brain Control at three in the format as well as having Soul Exchange at three. Soul Exchange is actually very powerful even though you can't attack the turn you use it because it allows you to tribute your opponent's set flip monsters for a tribute summon before they can 
even activate. Soul Exchange can also be used on your opponent's monster with Metamorphosis. Fun fact. And with other powerful tribute monsters like Vampire Lord, Parshat, and Jinso that you could tribute summon for as well as your monarchs, it is very easy to win duels with this deck. The other best decks, like I said earlier, have alternative win conditions, but they might be the most famous alternative win conditions of all time. I know one of them is at least because it's Burn, which people still play to this day, and the other one being Empty Jar. But let's talk about Burn first. Burn has had so many different variants over the years, and even has a few in GOAT format. But at the end of the day, they all win exactly the same. Get your opponent's life points down to zero. Also similar to other formats, the deck is stall oriented, so don't be surprised to see Burn decks playing Skill Drain and Gravity Binds because the best ones will. Burn is an extremely simple deck. Don't let your opponent play and then win. Now lastly to Empty Jar. Simply put, Empty Jar flips Morphing Jar and Cyber Jar over and over and over again to deck you out. Flip Flop is also a deck worth mentioning, but I'm just going to talk about Empty Jar because it's the most popular Flip Flop deck debatably. Empty Jar's sole purpose is to make you go through your entire deck as quickly as possible so that you lose by game mechanic. Because if you can't draw for your turn, you lose. However, Empty Jar is significantly worse than Burn is the other main deck in my opinion. Now, the deck can win, but it can also go very neg and lose very fast. It also loses to flip killers, which there are plenty of in GOAT formats, and some decks like I was talking about earlier main deck a ton of them. Tiger Stun, for example, these days more often than not will main deck three Blade Knight. Empty Jar can also lose to Solemn Judgment, which a lot of players will main deck three of also. Trust me when I say that if you play GOATs for a while, you will know that you have to worry about burn a lot more than Empty Jar. Even though GOAT format is old at this point, it is still constantly being innovated and is still the most popular legacy Yu-Gi-Oh format by about a million miles. I'm starting this series because I will always play GOAT format, and I want to share all of the phenomenal fun, innovation, and nostalgia that is GOAT format with everybody because anyone and everyone can play it and learn it. The format is extremely cheap, especially when compared to modern Yu-Gi-Oh, and in all likelihood, if you've been playing for a little bit, you might have most of, if not all, the cards already in your commons. At the very least, for a decent enough enough deck that's playable in the format. Because don't forget, there are many other viable and powerful decks that are legal in GOATS. Gravekeeper, Zombies, and Benkai OTK are just some that instantly come to mind. There's also Water decks and different OTK decks, as well as other Defense and Flip Flop decks that I briefly mentioned earlier. It is also called GOAT format because it is the greatest Yu-Gi-Oh format of all time. I am Yu-Gi-Oh Jesus, I am declaring it because it is. It is the perfect snapshot of Yu-Gi-Oh history capturing the original anime era as well as the beginnings of the GX era. What more is there to say? Like, what, what are you waiting for? Go play some goats! Meh! Subscribe! <laughs> <laughs>